Jared Johnson here. And so in this video, I'm going to be bringing in Adronis. And Adronis is going to be talking about a very interesting topic, and that is all about the Argothan network. So basically, the Argothan network, in a nutshell, is a lot of the inner Earth beings, the beings that exist within our own planet. How did they get here? How long have they been here? What type of beings are there? Are we going to be communicating with these types of beings down the road? So Adronis is going to be covering uh, these particular questions. As we now go into the challenge state, I will bring them through and we'll look more into the Argothan network. So here we go. <coughs> You're here. At this time, we bid you greetings and thank you very much once again for the opportunity of this interaction today. I am Adronis of Sirius, sending love, appreciation, and gratitude to all who are tuning in to this particular broadcast being brought forward through your internet collective consciousness. What we would like all of you to do at this time is simply allow yourselves to get relaxed, get comfortable, and tune in to the vibrations of Sirius so that you may synchronize, harmonize, and align to all the information that we have to share. Also understand that everything that we will share today is simply that of our perspective, our point of view. For all knowledge, all information, all creation itself resides within your very heart's beings and souls. The Argothan Network. Well, basically to get an understanding relating to what the Argothan Network is, you must go back into the Genesis around the time to when it began. Now understand that this is something that we have not revealed before because, again, it required a certain amount of timing to bring it about appropriately in regards to, shall we say, the collective, this particular collective, viewing this particular information right now to digest it. There were five particular forms of satellites that once existed around the Goliath Earth planet that was known as Meldek and that these particular five satellites were of the following. Ceres, Mars, Earth, Venus, Mercury. These were the five orbiting satellites that revolved around the Goliath Earth. Now basically when we are referring to a Goliath Earth, we are referring to an Earth of vast size, many times that of the size of your own planet Earth. We would state in the idea in regards to its overall mass was approximately, give or take, around half the size of Jupiter. This would basically be the size range in appropriateness relating to the idea of Maldek. And that again, these particular five orbiting satellites, there are also several other smaller satellites, again no more smaller than your own moon in that particular way, that were also orbiting Maldek at the time. But these particular five worlds, in that sense, contained much of the particular type of alliances that were a part of this, shall we say, experimentation relating to Maldek. Maldek, again, herself, had other particular forms of beautiful beings gracing upon her planet. You would understand these as the six root races that all occupied the idea of Maldek and these particular planetary satellites. So again, the six root races. The sixth root race would represent that of what you would know as the pale blue humanoid. So again, understanding your own natural five root races that you have upon your planet. All of them connected together through this particular form on a human level, relating to the idea of how they lived. Many of them, again, went to these other particular planets for the purpose of terraforming. And again, through the idea of terraforming and colonizing in that sense, beginning new foundations, planting new seeds, as it were. And these were within what you would know as the many of millions of years ago. And so the whole idea together is that much of the human race that encountered the idea of Maldek in that sense came at a much later time. There were in that sense, even before the human race upon Maldek, other beings that were not human that once occupied the space of Meldek. Human beings, in that sense, that came from this particular form of star system originated from other star systems as well, too. Again, many of the different forms of humanoid-based stars, such as Sirius, such as Pleiades, such as Andromeda, such as Arcturus, etc. 
many other different forms of human races began to, again, realize that there was this beautiful planet here, the planet of Maldek, and again, it's orbiting moons. And basically, you could say that everything was being prepared for humanity's arrival, well within these millions of years ago. Now, as we have stated, that Saturn was the very first planet, the eldest planet, upon your star system. Following next is Jupiter. Following next was Meldek. And so the whole idea in that sense is that humans came here and began to terraform this star system. Now, in regards to many of the other particular types of beings that were here before the human race would be that of what you would know as the reptilian energy. And so there were many other reptilian, even insectoid beings as well, too, that occupied this space firstly before humanity got here. So the whole idea in that sense is that there were eventually certain forms of wars that were being produced that were again fighting over territory. But we will save those informations for another time. The idea here relating to the idea of Maldek and to the idea of the Argothan network is that eventually when Maldek met her destruction, when she basically imploded, before that time occurred, the other particular forms of outer planets that were once occupying the orbitable path of Maldek moved to different trajectory points for the, shall we say, precaution of safety. And that when Maldek exploded, there in that sense needed to be a great deal of intervention to prevent from other experiments going awry. So it was foreseen that Maldek would meet her doom in that particular way, and that certain planets were being prepared so that they would be what you would know as reserves or backups in regards to everything that took place related to Maldek. And so again, Maldek exploded. And again, many of the smaller satellites, again, no more bigger than your moon, were encompassed within the explosion. And now Maldek exists of what you would know as your asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. So if we are going more into the Argothan network, they have existed, again, through Maldek, through Ceres, through Mars, through Earth, through Venus, and through Mercury. So again, as time passed, much of the original inhabitants that once occupied Maldek went to these particular four planets. Again, much of the survivors that decided to leave Maldek before its explosion migrated to Mars. And again, many of these in that sense were, shall we say, much of the culprits that were responsible for the war. You would refer to them in that sense as the Maldek elite. And they basically existed within the interior terrains of Mars. And again, we're at war with many of the other inhabiting races there, such as reptilians, such as insectoids, such as other indigenous human races as well too, or primate races as well too. But again, if we're fast forwarding more so to the idea of Earth herself, is that yes, Earth was against once more so under the claim of the reptilian energy and has been for approximately 85 to 90 million years. And so when you're basically looking in the idea of a human intervention, that they basically came in around the time of about half that particular type of span, around the times from what you would know as 30 million, 40 million, 45 million years ago, around there, give or take. Again, many different inhabitants have come and gone. But again, Earth was the seed that was eventually meant to be, shall we say, the planet of the future. And that much of the Argothan network began to work their way underground. And this is regarding to the idea that even came before the era of Mu, or the area that you would know as Lemuria. Even before those times, there were inner colonies that were being produced. Again, the entire planet was being terraformed for third density consciousness. And so the whole idea is that many of these particular groups decided to work together and operate underground. Now again, many of these particular groups <clears throat> that worked underground understood the significance of living in an underground habitat rather than the idea of the surface. The surface in that particular way corroborates more to the idea of second and third density life forms. And that again, the third density life forms still represent the idea of ones that need to be initiated into the pursuance of nature, into understanding nature upon the surface and being able to work alongside her. Once that happens, then graduation can occur where those other third density beings 
can now align and move into the interior crusts of the planet to basically, in that sense, experience an entirely different Earth. But much in regards to, shall we say, some of the ancients or the originals of human beings that came here, originally migrated, yes, from Meldek, many of them also came from Venus. <clears throat> and so many of the particular types of beings that you may understand are underground, that are subterrane, that are human in that sense, are again not only the remnants of Meldek, but are again more so the idea of the ideal remnants of Venus. Now the whole idea in that sense is that the Saturnian Council, or what you would know as the Confederation of Planets, basically gave the permission slips, in that way of speaking, to these other particular planets to run different experiments. But because again there was a great deal of war that occurred during Meldek and much of these particular planets suffered much of the degree of the war from the planet Maldek in regards to its, in that sense, imperialistic qualities. Different forms of pr approaches were made. And so again, beings that were meant to commit themselves more so to Venus's restoration moved themselves into Earth's plane, again, a great deal of time ago. And that many other particular beings were also working their way together into the interior core of the planet. So again, certain beings were already here beings that you would know as your primates, beings that you would know as your insectoid races, beings that you would know as your reptilian races. Again, also, much of the first and second density life occurring upon the surface. That again, the idea of the extinction of the dinosaurs was all part, in that sense, a game changer. It was all about being able to render much of the dinosaurs extinct. Now, however, it is important to realize that much of the dinosaurs did not become extinct through this grand disaster. Some were able to survive. And it is very true that mankind was able to walk alongside dinosaurs. It was not, in that sense, such a far-fetched idea. That dinosaurs, again, in different forms of ranges, were able to occupy the plane of Earth much later than what your scientists may believe. So dinosaurs, in that sense, actually have had much more of a recent appearance upon your surface, more so than the idea of feeling that they were extinct millions and millions of years ago. This is incorrect. There were, in that sense, dinosaurs existing upon your planet well within the thousands of years ago, rather than the idea of just the millions. But again, moving more so into the idea of the Argothan network. That the Argothan network simply exists as custodians. They are all here to work together to helping, in that sense, uplift the planet on their end. Now, you would understand that more of the elder races, and we will simply refer to them as that, as the elder races, have again moved into these particular inner crusts. Now, as we have also stated, that the Earth itself is not primarily hollow. It is much more in regards to looking into your own body, as if your own body were drained of fluid, and being able to see all of these vaults, all of these open areas in that sense, clusters in that particular way. So we would refer to your Earth more of a clustered Earth, rather than the idea of it actually being hollow even though, yes, it is true that there are hollow openings in your northern and southern poles that do open at certain times. But again, looking into the idea of the Argothan network, will they eventually be interacting with mankind? It is true, yes. What is it that the inner earth beings, that the elder races in that sense, possess underground? What are their facilities like? That again, around the times of your Atlantis, the earlier times of Atlantis, that both the Argothan network and extraterrestrials themselves came to a truce, an agreement in that way, that much of the beginning civilizations of the new human race would work together in allowing technology that has been utilized through the inner Argothan networks to be utilized within their society. So this for in that sense, had been arranged. Now again, these crystals were not like the common crystals that you would find within the metaphysical stores. No. The idea in that sense is that these crystals existed very, very deeply within the interior of your planet and actually contain living consciousness. Basically, you would understand that these crystals are actually spirit energy. They actually exist in that sense through much of the consciousness that exists within the interior of the earth. So basically, many of these particular crystals were actually being brought up through the planet. They are again very much like giant crystal towers. And many may actually remember 
that when they have had past life regressions in Atlantis, that they may actually see large crystalline towers. And this is basically in regards to the agreement that took place between the Argothans and the human race upon the surface. So again, the agreement was a truce that the inner Argothan network in that sense would also begin to work together with mankind as well too in regards to the assistance of technologies. This also related to the idea of hovering vehicles or levitation based vehicles, levitation structures as well. This again allowed the creation of different forms of orbital platforms to actually be seen within the sky, again like crystalline cities. There are also other particular cities that were being created above the earth as well too, like crystalline structures as well. And so, much of this technology that was given to men by the Argothan networks actually allowed man in itself to become highly technological. But again, as many of us have learned, man received too much power too soon, and this led into the state of corruption. Again, as we have talked about previously, that many of the beings that once occupied Mars that destroyed it again through another internal war basically transported themselves upon the planet Earth. And again, this is what led to an uprising, no more different than, in that sense, your own Native Americans dealing with the Spanish invasion. That is primarily what was happening in Atlantis. And because all of this chaos ensued, and again, the entire world was at war through the idea of the thriving need and desires and corruptions and greeds, power struggles relating to this Atlantean empire, that the Argothan network decided that it was going to withdraw all of its technology. And again, after the Atlantean disaster occurred, the Argothans promised that they would no longer prematurely give mankind technology that would lead to something like what happened in Atlantis. So this is giving you a hint, an idea, relating to the type of technology that much of the Argothans have. So again, many of the inner earth beings, and even many of the reptilian beings, the insectoid beings, the primate beings in that sense, have access to this technology. So they do have access to much of the crystalline technology that was existing upon the times of Atlantis. So this is giving the idea that they have reached a state of responsibility. They reached a point of maturity to where they could utilize this particular technology responsibly. So again, it is what you would know as organic living technology. It is not nuts and bolts technology is what you have been given on the surface of your particular planet. Again, mankind has not yet been granted that idea of consciousness-based technology at this particular time in the mainstream. However, this may be something that may change within the future. But again, the Argothans exist interiorly in your planet through, again, large catacombs, large vaults. And they do appear to have what you would know as particular types of cities. Now, these cities are, in that sense, are actually holographically glyphed, which means that they are imprinted throughout, in that sense, other substances of matter. So it is basically actually utilizing the forms of holographic technology used through the crystals to actually rephase matter and bring it into more, shall we say, technological means. They utilize the forms of crystals to power much of their own inner cities. And again, there are technologies that are very similar that you would find upon your own planet right now upon the surface. There are, in that sense, certain forms of housing. There are certain forms of furniture as well, too. There are other particular levels of lighting as well, too. Lighting that is actually emitted, again, through crystalline light or even through the idea of the walls and caves. So again, they do have a very modern habitat throughout many of the inner catacombs of your own interior planet. So again, much of the Argothans are simply dealing within, shall we say, their own particular affairs. Now, as Earth on the surface is ascending, as are the beings interior. Now, basically, the beings within the interior aspect of your planet, some may ask, well, Adronis, is it true that they are operating on a fourth density level. Well, you are moving into a fourth density level, so that is partially true. But it is more so in the idea that they are very much within the physical dimension that you reside. But because they operate in a way that they are not being bombarded by cosmic waves, and they are not in that sense receiving much of the cosmic interference, like what you humans are experiencing right now in regards to the state of acceleration. They are in an area of the planet in that sense that is a little bit more stable in that way. They are not in that sense prone to experiencing any particular types of natural disasters because where they exist in the interior area of the earth, 
those particular disasters do not touch in that way. They do have access to water, of course, because again, there are reservoirs. In fact, there are larger oceans contained within the interior of your planet that is actually even more deeper and larger than the current or oceans upon your surface. So they have access to this particular type of water. So again, their technology is holographic. They are able to manifest things simply through the connection to thought. That is, in that sense, how advanced they are. Now again, depending upon the type of Argothan that you speak of, will greatly depend in regards to what they use their technologies for. Again, reptilians will use them in different ways. Insectoids will use them in different ways. Human beings will use them in different ways. Primates will utilize them in different ways, such as the being that you would know as a Sasquatch. <clears throat> These are, again, beings that exist within the interiors of your planet. Yes, Sasquatch, yes, Bigfoot is indeed real, but they are inner Earth beings. So, understand that these connections to the Argothans here and where they are going with you is that they do have the opportunity to connect with you in the future and that they are actually working together with specific individuals upon your planet. However, the idea of the individuals they are working with are very scarce because, again, they are still not attempting to make themselves widely known. So, again, this is why we are not giving away any particular locations to their exact positions. But the whole idea is that, yes, they exist. They have been here for a very, very long time, since the earlier times, well before humanity came upon the surface in regards to the newly designed human. But they have been here since the times of Maldek, since the time to where Ceres, Mars, Earth, Venus, Mercury were simply moons orbiting across Maldek. They have been here. They have worked together in that sense and are very adept at being terraformers. They are actually able to allow the interior of the planet to thrive. And again, this reflects in regards to its outer interior. If you're ever wondering how a planet itself actually becomes very much like an Earth-like planet, it is not what's happening on the surface. It's what's happening within the planet itself. It is much of the, in that sense, more deeper work that is actually being brought forward in the interior of the planet. The reason being is because those with love that travel within the planet and actually create societies within the planet and actually reflect that particular consciousness is like a ripple. And basically the idea in that sense of how planets can be arranged to an earth-based consciousness is everything in regards to love service, terraforming, that is being brought forward into the interior. That's basically what you would understand is where all the switchboards are. That is where, in that sense, much of the behind-the-scenes mechanics are actually happening upon the Earth, is within the Argothan network, is within the Argothan cities. That is why your planet is as beautiful as it is. It is not to say that down the road that Venus will not be restored or Mars will not be restored. They certainly will. But because you humans are not quite ready to all of a sudden see that these planets are now starting to thrive again, you would be very, very curious about that. And so there has been an agreement to hold off any particular types of current terraforming of Venus and of Mars to actually restoring them back into Earth-like worlds. Because Mars and Venus were once very much like your Earth. Mercury, no. Ceres, no. Different types of planets, different types of arrangements in that sense. More extraterrestrial in that way. But it is fundamentally true that all the moons of Maldek were brought here from other different star systems, including your own Earth. And so again, they eventually came together. But that information right now that we have is not available for sharing at this current time. But the whole idea in that sense is eventually, down the road, you may discover that many of them will come forward and actually work together to developing yet another truce and being able to share in technology. This is quite a ways down the road right now because they are still looking to see how well humanity will connect with the Earth. Many of them, in that sense, actually still hold very much grudges relating to the idea, in that sense, about what happened with Atlantis. And they are not looking to the idea, in that sense, of offering humans technology. Many of them actually feel that it was a grand mistake to actually create a human race like this that has 22 different genetic races contained within its own genome and in that sense, creating such instability. And so they do have certain forms of hardships. Some of them, in that sense, do have hard feelings against humanity. So it is what you would know as a mixed bag right now. But there are certainly ta talks happening behind the scenes to determine, in that sense, particular points of disclosure, that when disclosure happens, 
will the inner earth beings one of, be one of these particular beings that will come forward? Well, that is in negotiation right now. Should that indeed happen, then there will most definitely be an exchange of technology. There will also be in the idea of the openings of certain vaults and of certain caverns and of certain points within your planet that will actually lead to these inner Argothan network cities. So again, it is a very exciting time to be alive because you are at the precipice of when all of this is going to start to unfold. But again, truce talks right now are being negotiated. Other forms of contracts in that particular way are being negotiated between deciding if the Argothan network will indeed share much of its knowledge and its presence with the human race within the near future. So again, nothing is 100% set in stone at this time. Negotiation is still taking place. We thank you very much for the opportunity of this interaction and for this brief history looking into the idea of the Argothan network. I am Adronis of Sirius, sending love, appreciation, and gratitude to all of you. Thank you again, farewell for this timing, and we now return to the conduit. We'll speak to you again, as now is forever and all is one. Goodbye. Well, <laughs> some very exciting information there. I'm certainly waiting for more information to be revealed, but uh, perhaps that will lead to a follow-up video down the road. So again, what do you guys think in regards to the Argothan Network? And again, everything that Adronis is sharing is just a perspective, just a point of view. It's not the be-all, end-all relating to the situation. It's just looking at one particular viewpoint. So others may have other particular viewpoints, especially with a lot of people that I've talked to who have had past life regressions. Uh, a lot of them have told me that they've seen crystalline cities, they saw these gigantic crystalline towers in Atlantis, so a lot of what Adronis has been saying as well, too. It's very fascinating stuff, so um, just keeping our fingers crossed and see what the future brings relating to the disclosure point between humanity, the inner earth beings, and uh, other beings that exist beyond our world. So, more videos to come. Thank you so much for watching. Any questions, again, feel free to visit my website, realitywhisperer.com private sessions, digital courses, free videos, and a lot more. Thank you again, and I look forward to speaking to you again in the next video. Take care, namaste, and may it be well with you. Goodbye. Size range, inappropriateness relating to the idea of Maldek. And that again, these particular five orbiting satellites, there are also several other smaller satellites, again, no more smaller than your own moon in that particular way, that were also orbiting Maldek at the time. But these particular five worlds, in that sense, contained much of the particular type of alliances that were part of this, shall we say, experimentation relating to Maldek. Maldek, again, herself, had other particular forms of beautiful beings gracing upon her planet. You would understand these as the six root races that all occupied the idea of Maldek perspective, our point of view, for all knowledge, all information, all creation itself resides within your very heart's beings and souls. The Argothan Network. Well, basically, to get an understanding relating to what the Argothan network is, you must go back into the genesis around the time to when it began. Now, understand that this is something that we have not revealed before because, again, it required a certain amount of timing to bring it about appropriately in regards to, shall we say, the collective, this particular collective, viewing this particular information right now to digest it. There were five particular forms of satellites. Hello everyone, Brad Johnson here. And so in this video, I'm going to be bringing in Adronis. And Adronis is going to be talking about a very interesting topic, and that is all about the Argothan Network. So basically, the Agartha network in a nutshell is a lot of the inner Earth beings, the beings that exist within our own planet. How did they get here? How long have they been here? What type of beings are there? Are we going to be communicating with these types of beings down the road? So Jonas is going to be covering uh, these particular questions as we now go into the challenge state 
I will bring him through. And that once existed around the Goliath Earth planet that was known as Meldek. And that these particular five satellites were of the following. Ceres, Mars, Earth, Venus, Mercury. These were the five orbiting satellites that revolved around the Goliath Earth. Now, basically, when we are referring to a Goliath Earth, we are referring to an Earth of vast size, many times that of the size of your own planet Earth. We would state in the idea in regards to its overall mass was approximately, give or take, around half the size of Jupiter. This would basically be the... We'll look more into the Argothan network. So here we go. <clears throat> we are here at this time, and we bid you greetings, and thank you very much once again for the opportunity of this interaction today. I am Adronis of Sirius, sending love, appreciation, and gratitude to all who are tuning in to this particular broadcast being brought forward through your Internet Collective Consciousness. What we would like all of you to do at this time is simply allow yourselves to get relaxed, get comfortable, and tune in to the vibrations of Sirius, so that you may synchronize, harmonize, and align to all the information that we have to share. Also understand that everything that we will share today is simply that of our perspective.